Well, I hate to say we told you so, but we told you so. Wednesday was a pretty big day in the market, and Thursday and Friday didn't disappoint. Riz and I are going to talk about what to expect next. Good evening, our fellow Riz Elite members and all of our subscribers here on YouTube. Welcome to our Elite webinar. Now, if you want the most up-to-date, unbiased information on the stock market and how to trade, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified every time we upload new content here on the Riz International YouTube channel. Now, as I kind of teased in the intro, we totally called this, guys. The Fed decided to pause rates on Wednesday, but the market absolutely puked after they heard Powell's speech. Now, Riz, tell me, what in the world was so you know ground-shaking that the market just took an, one of the biggest dumps I've seen in uh, quite some time? Yes, yeah, a pretty aggressive drop, uh, you know, as you can see. Uh, big red candles there. Simply put, uh, the market is essentially factoring in what Powell said, uh, which was rates for longer, higher rates uh, for longer. Uh, maybe, again, asterisk there with maybe one more rate hike. We've been saying that, right? We knew they weren't going to raise this time and they didn't, but not all is uh, sunshine rainbows, right? Uh, we knew that this is, uh, we're at shaky ground. We know we're at a critical point and beautiful. Thank you, Chris, for, for outlining that 3% drop in the market just in the last uh, three trading days, right? On average, uh, 1% there just in the last, uh, was that three or four trading days? Either way, uh, we we're at just pretty three. much critical, okay, three, critical support area, 43.20, 43.30, slightly dipped below. I mentioned to elite members, look, we were expecting this. You said this too in the beginning, Chris, this is something we are not surprised about. Uh, and I've said to Everyone, whether they're in elite, whether they're not, whether they join this webinar, whether they're following me on IG, social media, in my stories, you name it, I say very openly and transparently that I've been in over 80% cash the last, uh, I would say the majority of the year. Maybe, you know, it goes up and down. Maybe there's points where I'm like 90%, maybe 75, 70%. But majority of the year, I could say on average, I've been about 80% cash. Of course, I can derive a return on that capital. Um via different uh, option strategies. But in a nutshell, I have been neutral bearish. Uh, I can't say this is surprising because the market was pricing in earlier rate cuts, which to me blew my mind. I'm like, this makes no sense. Like the market can't be this obtuse, can it? Um, turns out it can. It can. Yeah, <laughs> right. So uh, and I'm not saying like I, I'm, I can tell the future or I'm that smart. I'm just saying that to me, it always seemed odd and it always kind of didn't sit right with me, so to speak. Uh, so I've been waiting for this pullback again. It is a three percent drop from, you know, the previous level is not. Oh, my God, crash type of thing. And I'm not saying it's going to be a crash. We never say these kinds of things. We never go this uh I would say clickbaity or anything like the other places do, um, other channels and other other media does. But uh, I do think there's a little bit more downside. The fact that we just dropped below that 43.30 area signals that as well. A lot of bearishness, especially after Friday, traded Friday. Uh, there was a little bit of whipsaw. You know, I had futures short. Uh, elite members knew in real time once again. I traded short the SPX futures. Um, and elite members could trade it however they want via ETFs, via the actual short in the ETF itself or futures if they want to join me in that or via options or different uh, products. But ultimately, I was net short um, on on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, sorry, and Friday. So both those days turned out to be profitable. In fact, it was a profitable week for me, for, for the portfolio, for the account. So, um, and, you know, I'll probably uh, show my year-to-date performance again with the video, uh, not just a screenshot, but a video actually of the total account performance instead of cherry picking individual trades. So I'd stay tuned for that in on social media and in elite if you're in there. Uh, but yes, uh, all in all, shouldn't be coming as a surprise. If it does come as a surprise to you that the market pulled back, again, we don't know if it was going to be 3%, 2%, 5%, but we did know there was it was due for a drop. Uh, guess what? You should have prepared or should have sort of positioned yourself a little bit uh i'm not saying oh sell everything but i'm saying you should have kind of been in the know uh you know if you take our word for it and our expertise and, and our insights 
but uh, here we are. I feel like this is opening us up for a few good opportunities. There's definitely a little bit more things that I'm kind of more pleased where they are in terms of pricing. Am I frothing at the mouth and jumping for joy to be able to get in them right away come Monday? No. Um, biding my time a little bit more. We also see that at the bottom there, you see the RSI kind of almost almost a smidget away from oversold level officially, right? So it's something to keep an eye on. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of a temporary bounce, like a mini, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, like a bounce off potential pivot point, maybe a dead cap, dead cap bounce, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't, I think we're going to see that. I was expecting that maybe to happen Friday, but it was a fake and I'm glad I held it through because uh, that short uh, turned out profitable as well. No, I, I love it. If if you've been listening to us, you should have been prepared uh, for this. This should come as no surprise. And yeah, I mean, we've been calling for, you know, a bit of a pullback for a while. And yeah, we finally got it when Powell decided to start talking. And I, I think it's humorous, honestly, that the, the market was pricing in rate cuts already, even though the Fed was saying, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Everybody's like, oh, I guess he was serious. I guess it yeah, really yeah. is true. Yeah, it's like... It's like imagine being 10 years old or something and then like your parents are like, yeah, you're going to be grounded. You're grounded. Stay in your room or whatever. No electronics, no friends. And then you don't take their word for it. But then turns out you can't go out. <laughs> what? You turns mean out I you can't, can't go out can't. and play even though I'm yeah. grounded? What? They're serious? Like, you know, it's just it's it's comical, like you said. But uh, here we are. And I, I again, like I've said many times and so have you, the Fed lost its credibility. Powell specifically lost his credibility, lost the value of his words, rightfully so. Why? Because all of 2021, these morons were like, oh, it's transitory. Oh, you know, we got this, you know, supply chains are just going to correct. And, you know, like it's just, it's, a, it's, it's criminal as to what happened. But hey, I can't believe it. It's two years now where that saga has played out. And obviously we've been in a rising rate environment for the last year over a year right which is to me is i can't even believe it like i honestly at, at some point i was like oh what did they start raising rates this year because i just i was like lost because i'm like what i'm like no they actually started raising started last year it's like 2023 is like it's gone it's just gotten away from me yeah. honestly we're in the last month of q3 the last seven eight days how many how many days in september chris like 31 there we go 30 30- 30. Okay. So like literally the last seven days last week, bro. And Q4. Fuck. Crazy, man. Crazy. As I was talking to Riz before the webinar, there's a saying when you, when you become a parent is the days are long, but the years are short. Uh, and that apparently is true if you trade the stock market as well. Uh, so yeah, time is definitely flying and we are coming into the back quarter of the year. Uh, this is going to be the last full trading week of Q3. Uh, so Buckle your safety belts, everybody, because it's going to be a wild ride. All right, let's take a look here at the breakdown for the S&P 500. Let me move myself out of the way just a little bit. Uh, and yeah, all sectors are down. Uh, you know, everything is taking a tumble. Even the energy sector, which had been on an absolute tear over the last couple of weeks, taking a bit of a dive here. And this just goes to show you that when you can't fight the market is really what it comes down to. If it's going to go, it's going to go. Uh, and we see probably the biggest loss here is in, uh, you know, consumer discretionary. I mean, taking an absolute dive here from about 36 at the high, third, let's call it 36 to 25. I know math on stream is hard, but I'm pretty sure that's, uh, you know, well over 10%. We'll call it 11 if I, my math is correct. Uh, and so, I mean, that's a pretty big drop, uh, you know, in one sector, but, you know, tech communications going down as well. And then those, you know, underperforming sectors are now performing even more poorly. Uh, so I, I'm interested to hear if you have any more commentary on this, Riz, but I mean, yeah, it, it definitely everything just rolled over once Wednesday hit. Yes, uh, not surprising uh, that everything goes lower. We know that this is, uh, when we see just kind of fear, I don't want to say panic, but just kind of fear or sell off in the market, a precipitous drop. Uh, like we said, 3% in three days in the index is quite big. Um, so when we see this kind of price action, it's not uncommon to see 
everything drop, whether it's utilities, all the way to tech, all the way to consumer discretionary and everything in between. Um, I feel like based on my thesis, if we do have a little bit more downside, again, after that little uh, mini bounce that we most likely will see at some point because the index is going to be oversold, a little bit dip buyers are going to come in. Um, and then it's, it's it, we'll, we'll see if it is sustainable or if it just drops back lower. Uh, but I do think if it does, it's going to be once again, a sell everything kind of uh, drop, right? And it's not the first time we've seen this. It's not going to be the last time either, where when the market really starts to price in, or in this case, price out something, uh, we could see it being uh, a bit of a bloodbath in all uh, sectors and even all asset classes, right? Like, so even if you, even if we look at bonds, uh, again, yields are different, but actual bond prices continue to go lower. Yields are actually holding up and maybe going a little bit higher. Uh, and we'll touch on that in the next uh, uh, slide as well, or the next after that. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there, but let's talk about the asset classes first. Uh, and, you know, it tickles me to death. Uh, you know, I listen to, and I know we harp on other channels all the time, but just can't get away from it because it's so hilarious. People are talking about oil skyrocketing. It's going to the moon. It, it, it's not even at $100 per barrel yet, guys. And actually, we kind of traded sideways this week, uh, you know, really just hovering right around this $90 per barrel mark. And, oh, yeah, gold is skyrocketing, except it's trading sideways. Uh, you know, again, uh, we're still hanging here right around this 1924 an ounce. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not overly surprised on this. You know, we made this pretty big solid leg up here on oil and now we're just kind of holding it this, you know, this even whole number here, closing the day 90.03 per barrel on oil. I personally am not too surprised. Uh, Riz, does this, you know, kind of consolidation here after this big run up really surprise you at all? No, nope, not surprising with gold. Uh, you would think it would actually spike, right? But I think oh, gold yeah. is at such a point where it's already kind of elevated, so to speak. Obviously, we know the 2050 area is that long-term all-time high. Uh, but the fact that it's holding is, is good enough. Even oil remaining to hold this 90 level. Uh, and there is some news. I know the last time we spoke, or maybe the one before that, we were saying, look, the U.S., the current administration pretty much dwindled down the SPR, the Special Petroleum Reserve. Uh, yeah. That that think of it like a big giant tanker, that's mm -hmm. um, underground tanker that's really meant to house barrels and bar millions and millions of barrels of, of crude oil just in case of an emergency or an energy crisis or something like that. And the current administration over the last, I think it's been a year, Chris, or something like that, they've brought that they've they've drained it they've they've used mm -hmm. that to add it to the supply uh uh nationally to the reason being to pressure prices down to bring inflation down make it easier on the pocket for the everyday consumer at the gas price uh in the u.s but the negative of that is you don't have that leverage anymore where uh you use that pocket you use that card right you use that uh, ace in the hole and what do you do do you refill it or do you not? And when do you do it? Um, the current administration hasn't been able to refill it uh, for the most part, you know, and the, there's talk now of maybe dropping it further. And I can't, I can't speak to how true this is or not. But one thing I've heard based on my reading is because it's an underground tank, there's brine involved, like, you know, for those that are, that are more sophisticated and understand this, there's you know, a brine involved, meaning like there's like a level of water, salt, whatever the case is in that tank. When you dissipate it all, when you remove all the oil, you have the brine level being up. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% uh, on this, and nor am I a specialist in this regard. But you, when you drain it, you have an issue where filling it back up becomes a problem. So think of it like a catch-22. Yeah, you can take some more out, um, and then maybe put a little bit more supply into the market, pressure gas prices and oil prices a little bit lower, but it might have a marginal impact. And then second, you may not be able to just fill it back up because of this issue. Think of it like using like a Tupperware container. Once you empty it, it's not reusable potentially, right? Potentially. So that's kind of what we're faced with. Something interesting to think about that the SPR, which I think was created 
don't get me, maybe it's 70s, 80s or something like that. And it's been there in some way, shape or form. And it's been, I would say, relatively filled up since the maybe the energy crisis. I think that was 80s or 90s. I think Chris, you might, you might know this. Yeah. So again, don't quote me, but this is most likely um, relatively the case, right? Like, don't quote me on the exact dates, but generally that's what it was for because of the energy crisis, uh, the U.S. decided we don't want to ever be held hostage uh, by by certain countries uh, in the in the Middle East and you know OPEC if prices get away from us and they impact. You remember the back in the day? This was before maybe I was born, maybe when we were kids. Uh, people had to line up. There was like lineups yep. that went to the highway just to fill up gas, like in scorching heat, right? So, oh, and they were rationing it too. I actually now, if I remember, it's, it was either the eighties or the seventies. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I I remember reading about this. I wasn't alive for it. Uh, so that somewhat dates me, uh, but dates you even more, Riz. Uh, but no, they had to where it's like uh, your if your license plate ended in, in like an odd or even, you could or couldn't yeah. fill up, uh, you know, during that day. And yeah, you're only allowed a certain number of gallons. Uh, so yeah, it was a pretty big, uh, pretty big deal. Rationing it out, damn, yeah. And Jeff says seventy. So yeah, I'll yeah, take it for it. Um, good, good call on that, Jeff. Um, yeah. So this was before our time. Mm -hmm. But of course, history is something to be taken into account and learn from. If only everyone could do that. But hey, that's another topic. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I remember we talked about it. The, the current admin wanted to refill at 60, but it looks like that ship has sailed and it's sailing north. Uh, as looks like what that ship is doing. So, yeah, uh, the strategic uh, oil reserve, obviously, yeah, taking a big hit. And I mean, I'll liken it to trying to cook pasta in a Tupperware because you ain't never getting that red stain out of there after that. Whenever you try and reheat pasta in a Tupperware container, same thing here. And I did, I may call Riz the oil tycoon, but uh, it doesn't mean he knows how to store it. He just knows how the price works, uh, and uh, that <laughs> is what we uh, worry about most here on Elite. Yeah, I always I'll tell people I'm like, look, I have my expertise, my competencies, but by no means, unlike all these other fucking gurus out there who think they're the second coming and they think that just because they excel or know a little bit in one thing that they know everything you know expertise isn't directly transferable uh to every discipline you talk to me about you know trading markets maybe oil supply demand all these kinds of things business economics all that stuff fine you talk to me about Fuck Tupperware, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Riz is not a Tupperware expert, but let's take a look here. We talked about it earlier, the bond yields. And yeah, bond yields continue to climb this week, even with the market taking a bit of a dip. And uh, yeah, obviously the U.S. dollar is crashing. And by crashing, I mean crashing up. Uh, we continue to see strengthening of the dollar compared to the other currencies around the world. Now that, as we talked about before, can be you know that the other currencies are weakening uh, which you know we touched on in our last webinar. And if you didn't watch our last webinar, it's probably because you didn't hit the like and subscribe button down below. Make sure you do that and click the bell notification icon so that you don't miss webinar. Uh, but yeah, Riz, uh, bonds and the dollar looking really strong right now. And you were saying bond prices were coming down. That seems to be a pretty uh, you know spicy investment if you want something that has a fairly low but consistent rate of return. Yes. So prices are down, yields are up, right? Uh, you, that's, that's how yield works. Um, so the yield uh, on cost uh, is high if you buy bonds, generally speaking, treasury bonds speaking, uh, specifically of the, what is it, the 2, uh, 10, and 30, mm -hmm. right? So uh, yes, they're relatively holding strong. Of course, why? As I've been saying for the better part of the year, that the bond market is signaling uh, a potential slowdown in the economy, no matter what the stock market things are doing, it's been continuing to signal that, hey, red flag, red flag, um, or like, you know, yellow flag, I should say, uh, whereas the stock market is saying, oh, it's green, time to go, right? So there's that inverse, uh, I don't want to say inverse, but there's that separate narrative between the two. Uh, like a bond, disconnect, I'd say. E there you go, even better uh, worded. Um, and I feel like the bond market, and I don't feel, I know the 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 bond market is a bigger market based on uh, just from an asset standpoint. There's more debt, right? Think of it this way. There's more debt than equity. Uh, so second, the bond market is, I would say, more right uh, than the equities market, the stock market. When it comes to predicting uh, 
slowdowns in the economy, you know, a little bit of a recession or whatever the case may be. So the bond market is usually the first to alert that. And then the equities market might at some point uh, get its head, you know, right. And then just uh, reverse course or, or start, start pricing things in. Just as we saw, is this pricing in that we saw the last week, uh, you know, just the beginning, maybe it's a small blip remains to be seen and that's what makes our life uh and my life specifically as um someone who has to kind of i don't want to say lead the ship but someone who has to steer us a little bit uh especially an elite i think it makes my job more interesting and uh i'll be honest a hell of a lot harder so uh, if everything was uh cut and dry uh, it would be easy but uh, hey these are the things that uh separate the the average from the greats, right? Not to say I'm that great, but uh, you really get the opportunity in markets like these to earn your keep. And I think that's what I excel at. Uh, it's been 16 years. And anyways, uh, getting back to the dollar now, the dollar continues to run up, like you said, not surprising. Other weak, other currencies are a little bit weaker. There's also a little bit more talk around more economic, global economic weakness. weakness. And sure, those, that kind of talk also kind of puts a little bit of a downward pressure on 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 other currencies uh we do know rates are staying up here uh as for powell so that bolsters the u.s dollar so i remember last week i said even if even if the rates don't go up at all from here and we don't get another rate hike next next uh in the next couple months or this next this coming quarter or in the next year doesn't mean the dollar can't continue to go up right so something to be uh, cognizant of, uh, but so far bond yields, strong U.S. dollar, uh, a sell-off in equities, all kind of developing. I don't want to say into a perfect storm, but it's kind of coming together with these ingredients. And not saying we're whipping it up just yet, but the ingredients are kind of there for uh, a hard landing. And I know that's a swear word uh, when it comes to those that really look at. Uh, economic policy and fed remarks and, and and really into that nitty-gritty hard landing meaning the r word uh, uh other recession. Sure. yes that's a recession that's a bad word right Apparently. right up there with the f word which would be fall but you know yes. yeah that, <laughs> right so let's see yeah no if, if you listen to powell's speech a little bit he did say that a soft landing might not be possible but you know only thing that people heard was not possible. Didn't hear the might part. Uh, and so down the market went. Uh, I want to go ahead and invite all of our elite members who are here to start posting your questions. But let's take a quick look at the big dates this month. Now, 27th, we've got durable goods. No one cares. But uh, next one, 28th, GDP growth. I think this one is going to be a very telling uh, you know, release here on the 28th. Uh, they're forecasting an increase in GDP. My gut tells me if it's lower than that, it's going to be bad news. Now, I could be wrong on that, uh, but we got some more on the 29th. We got core PCE and then personal income and personal spending as well. Uh, Riz, what are your thoughts on the GDP? Do you think it uh, it's actually going to see an increase or do you think maybe it'll just stay where it is or you know, maybe? Yeah, to, to clarify, this is like you. So what they do with GDP, which is, I mean, whether you like it or not, whether you're a fan of how they do it or not, it's a fact. The way they do it is they release GDP and then they release like preliminary numbers. Then they go back because obviously GDP is a large number. A lot of data has to come together. A lot of data has to be double checked, verified, yada, yada, and kind of cleared and cleaned up. So we do see minor adjustments. So what they do is they release the first and then the second uh, number, like it's still the same quarter. They're still calculating for the same quarter, but the third one is the final, like this is the final one, this is like the final Think of it like the nail in the coffin, the final stamp of what the actual number was So for the previous quarter. So we're just getting the previous quarter still, but the actual. So the, they're thinking based on this final metric that it might be a little bit higher than actually stated previously. Okay, so that's what's kind of happening here. We do know that it was the U.S. economy was relatively strong um, you know, in the last release now. Let's see what the final number is. Is it revised? Think of it like being revised, right? It's like revised up. So is it going to be revised up? That tells us that, okay, the U U.S. economy is a little bit more 
resilient, a little bit more stronger than previously stated for the same quarter. Now, of course, when the next quarter numbers release, that will be completely fresh and that will be a different uh, case altogether. So this is like finding dollar bills in the couch cushions, right? It's like we thought we had this much money for the month, but we actually found this extra stuff in the couch cushions and now it's better. That's going to be my uh, way of putting it here. So that, that completely fair. Absolutely. Fair enough. All right, cool. That sounds great. All right. Uh, waiting for our elite members to go ahead and post up their questions here. Now is the time. Uh, but yeah, Riz, you were said earlier while they're, everybody's typing uh, in their questions, you said you were going to be kind of chilling out this week just to kind of see how things go. I, I like your, your thought. We probably will see some buying here. Like you said, some dip buyers getting in uh, while the price is low. But I mean, yeah, obviously our, uh, you know, thesis is that we should see, well, we hypothetically believe this is our opinion. Uh, that we may see more selling in the market in the next coming weeks as, you know, they continue to digest this uh, speech from Powell and everything that's coming in. Uh, but yeah, is there anything that you're going to be keeping an eye on, Riz, or are you just going to in a wait and see mentality? Yeah, so we do. So that's a good question. We do have, we're not obviously earnings season, but we obviously every week there's companies, small and large releasing earnings. So one thing I will say uh, that kind of, want to point attention to is Costco releases after uh, close on Tuesday. Um, so this will be interesting right off of there. What is that? Is that the all time highs around 570? I think no, uh, okay, close enough. So like, that's like a triple top three at 570. Damn. That's, that's clean. That's a clean drop. Eh? Okay. So that's a good setup for potential. Again, we know that when it comes to earnings, these technicals don't really matter. Um, and it's really fair game. Think of it like a coin toss 50, 50, but, uh, in terms of what they report and how the market reacts to it. But generally this is something you want to keep an eye on this setup is looking a little bit bearish, obviously. Um, especially so from a technical standpoint with the triple top around 565, 570, whatever that is. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, another company we want to draw our attention to is Micron after close MU. This is a semiconductor, uh, this also has kind of like a triple top coming in around 72, 71-ish area. Um, so once again, something to keep an eye on, not anywhere near its all-time highs, but still in that kind of a little bit of a steady uptrend. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if it kind of drops below this, uh, what is that, the 50-day 50, 50 moving average. Yeah, okay, interesting. And then... Last but not least, we have Nike on Thursday after close. So this has been absolutely beat down. Definitely getting uh, uh, sold off very much. So look at the RSI as well, completely uh, oversold, can, remains oversold. And then we have earnings coming up. So kind of depending on how I would say the report is definitely going to make a big difference. But right now, it seems like a decent entry point. The closer we get to that 88, 84 even kind of area. That's previous uh, low, right? So this is a big upside down U. Think of it like that. Now, definitely some cool takers to keep an eye on just to watch. Obviously, we're not trying to give you financial advice. This is just stuff that Riz is going to watch and maybe he'll take a position, maybe he won't. But if he does, our elite members will know. And one thing that you should be doing, we touched on it earlier, is make sure you get down in uh, the description of the video. There's a link to Riz's Instagram. Uh, definitely want to follow that uh, if you want some hilarious memes, first off. Uh, and, you know, second off, uh, some alerts as far as what's going on, uh, how Riz is performing, and, uh, you know, kind of a little bit of an insider look into Elite. Not too much, just a taste. The first one's free, but the second one will cost you. You know how that works. Uh, but definitely, if you're not following Riz on Instagram, you definitely should, uh, because there's a lot of great information that he shares there. Yeah, and it costs nothing. Yeah, it's absolutely free, which just like hitting the like and subscribe button, that's free too. And you can help us out by that, by getting our message out to other uh, traders so that people can learn what they need to be doing in the market and separating all of the hype from what's actually going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Jeff, uh, who is obviously usually has some of the best questions here, said he wish he had a questions, but he's moving mostly towards cash. And I think that's a 
pretty good strategy. Obviously, we want if we're going to see more downside, you want to have that cash position, as Riz likes to call it, have your dry powder ready to go so you can load it in the gun and hit that shot when it's time to go. Uh, because, you know, if you're stuck holding the bag in a, in a position right now and the market starts selling off, you're just going to have to hold that for who knows how long. Uh, but yeah, growing that cash, cash position, tough word to say, uh, definitely a good strategy right now. And that's something that Riz has been preaching pretty much all year. Yes, definitely, uh, Jeff. That's not a bad plan. I will also say a caveat that if someone holds Remember, it all comes down to your time frame, comes down to what you hold, comes down to what your thesis is. So I can't speak for everyone, but generally speaking, uh, and, it's, uh, and I can apply this you know, to my scenario. If I hold something solid uh, and like a great company, good fundamentals, you know, AAA type of company, if it's down from my entry point, if it's red, if it's in a, in, in a unrealized loss, doesn't mean I need to sell everything and, and, and go completely cash again. If someone has none of those positions open or if they're in profit, what you want to do is maybe consider taking gains. But if someone's in a situation where they have a great company, they don't mind holding, their thesis is still in check, uh, they don't need the capital, they're not essentially strapped for cash for other trades, it's not a bad idea to continue to just hold. Because we've seen in the past that, look, markets obviously don't just go down in a straight line. They recover a bit. They kind of move like waves right up and down. Uh, we've seen how these waves up and down can ultimately mean that the market in the long run does go up. Uh, there are obviously situations where we see big pullback, you know, big uh, haircuts, but ultimately they do trend up in the long run. Uh, the last year and a, and a half has been a, one of the longest kind of, I don't want to say consolidation because it's not a consolidation, but it's like a doldrum. It's been like this market that went into a bear market and then it went into a bull market, but then now it's kind of teetering. What is the, um, just if you flip over to the uh, sectors chart again, Chris, what's the SPY up this year? So up nearly 12% year to date, right? So it's still a green year, even after this uh, 3% drop uh, the last week. Um, so let's see if it's sustainable, right? We're not in full blown uh bull market territory yet. yeah yeah we don't we're 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 kind of in that uh like you said getting there let's see uncharted absolutely and you know i think that's a great way to go ahead and close the webinar uh obviously we kind of got to wait yes we did take a dip last week but it doesn't mean that we need to just you know drop everything and run we're not suggesting you sell everything but building a cash position whether that be adding to your account Selling positions that are in profit right now could be a very good strategy to make sure that you're ready for when that market hits the bottom and we start to get that rebound, the real rebound, not the fake one that we're expecting this week. Uh, so, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. Hope you enjoy yourself. Uh, go do something fun. The weather is beautiful, at least here in the Midwest and up where Riz lives, uh, up there in Kanukistan. Uh, so, Guys, have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Thank you for all of our subscribers for watching the replay, and we'll see you in the market on Monday.